Knowledge is the small picture. Wisdom is the large one. My friends, let's jump into these charts, see where these markets are headed. At this point, as always, we jump in first, almost always, with the S&P 500. Start with the smaller chart to see where it is and what is going on. We can see that for the day overall, we popped up a little higher in the morning, not quite as high in the afternoon. End of the day up 0.77%. We're below the 200 EMA. What do you see here? You see a sideways slide. You see some herky-jerkiness in our STC indicator. We're below the 200 EMA. And again, waiting for a clear sign that this market is moving in one direction or another. On the two-day chart, we are negative on the STC, but you can again see where it's flattened out underneath the 200 EMA. What about the weekly? Weekly, we saw two weeks of strong down movement pairing off last week. And this week, we pretty much have a doji. Lots of indecision, movement up, movement down. Not a lot happening with the candle. Green on the STC just above the 200 EMA. What is going to happen? We don't know. It's going to either go up or down after maybe a little bit more sideways sliding. We'll wait, watch, and see as things continue to move along with this new year. Maybe it'll pop up and it'll give us an opportunity if it pushes through this 200 EMA to jump into an up move. We shall wait, watch, and see. We do need things to get reset somehow here with this um, STC. And we'll see as things move along. We don't, have to, we don't have to get too anxious. We'll let the markets come to us. Let's look at the queues. Where do we see things going there? Well below the 200 EMA. Again, more of this sideways sliding. More volatility we can see, of course, here. Moving to the top on the STC after a sideways slide in between the two bands in this little gray area. We'll see where that's leading us up 0.48%. We look at the two-day. It is still negative, well below the 200 EMA. We can show you that. And we have a green spinning top, still red on the STC. Maybe that'll be flipping over. Maybe the market will get charged up somehow. Much more negative on that weekly chart. Four weeks of down movement, two weeks of strong down movement. That'd be three weeks ago and two weeks ago, or I just last week and the week before, let's say that. This week, we have a red down candle not reaching the low of the prior week, gone flat on the STC. We'll see if this market's going to roll over and keep moving down or stabilize and try to move up. We don't have a clear sign yet. That is okay, my friends. By the way, Patreon members, we did... The monthly question and answer session brought you a brand new chart. I think you'll get a lot out of it. Please check out that training. It was emailed to you. And as always, with everything we post for Patreon members, it's also posted at our Patreon site behind the firewall just for you. You're interested in Patreon membership, want to support the channel, please do so. Where are we on 20-year bonds? Up for the day, 1.37%. Two days of decent up movement. Of course, we've had the STC on the half-day chart rotate over. Did that in the morning. It took it all the way until this morning. And we see things uh, heading up in the morning, pairing off a little bit in the afternoon, as it did yesterday, still below the 200 EMA. Where are we on the two-day? It is still decidedly negative after the STC rolled over into the red. And we had one, two, three, four, five days of strong down movement. Now we see this latest up move. That is good to see. We'll see where that leads us. We are also well below the 200 EMA exponential moving average on the weekly chart when it comes to 20-year bonds. We have a red spinning top green on the STC. So again, waiting for things to sort their way out. Look how much I have to tighten this up so you can even find the 200 EMA. So we will continue to wait, watch, and see how these charts set themselves up for future movement. What's up with gold? Gold is abounding up, of course. We had things in gold go from red to green back in the, let me see here, in the morning on Friday. And of course, 
ticked along in the afternoon, bumped up strong on Tuesday. Remember, we were closed Monday and then strong again in the morning on Wednesday. And of course, we see gold just moving up nicely. Kudos to those of you who braved it again, pulled the trigger on Friday morning. I know some of you did. Always appreciate you guys sharing with me. And we will put in uh, the we will put in the little tracker and see how well that move goes for us. Up 0.94% for the day. Well, I tell you what, let me just for those of you who are not initiated, I will show you how you actually do that. Now we see we were red. We had this green, it did not reset. That was a concern even after things went red and red again. We didn't go back up on the green and then back down to reset. That can be a problem. Uh, we've talked about that many times in the past, but when we look at setting things, that is in the morning on Friday the 30th, of course we go to our long position. We go to the morning of Friday the 30th. We drop it in. We go to the settings and we set our inputs. Now our buy-in point that morning uh, around the 1150 mark was actually $69.78. And oops, I put that in the wrong place, no problem. I'll just cut it out there, $69.78. And then we want to go and we want to set both our profit and our loss bands, these red areas here. How do we do that? Well, of course, my friends, we look at where we are on the average true range. Look over here, and when I line it up right here, you will see the red number is 138. That's 138 ticks. It goes right there. Boom. 138 ticks twice that is what our profit is. Remember, we do a two to one risk to reward ratio. So that would be, if my math is correct, that would be 276. I believe we are correct there, just doing that math on the fly. I am a lawyer by training. Don't hold myself out as any mathematician, but we can double check that when we look at Yes, that is correct. A uh, 0.81 times 2 is roughly 1.63. And of course, we hit in the afternoon, in the morning rather, on Wednesday, we hit the profit mark. Boom! Now, you know that we, in these last two, we took losses uh, both those times. So we made up for some of that in this quick trade. And again, when things go right, <clears throat> typically, we well, we like them to go right fast, and it did do that. Congratulations, kudos for those of you who jumped into that trade. Now, again, we'll see what repeats for us as we go along. And, of course, we do see on the weekly chart, we, of course, uh, well, let's go to the two-day first. We see things well above. Look at that huge two-day candle. That, of course, was resulting for us with that successful practice trade. And we are well above the 200 EMA. Things are in an upward trend. Same thing, of course, with the weekly. And, of course, when this weekly cross occurred, we have seen nothing but green candles with wicks on top. Nice, strong up movement. Gold is a trending upwards after quite a while of some downtrending and some skip starts as we were trying to use that 195-minute chart. Wouldn't have been a problem with the weekly. Lastly, let's take a look at where we are on Bitcoin. Well, it was up for the day 0.92%. We look at this weekly chart, what do we really see here? We just see things languishing around that bottom, just sliding sideways. Nothing exciting, no big takeoff yet. And we will wait and see when Bitcoin is going to bottom out and when it's going to offer us any opportunities. Two-day chart, you can see again that slip sliding sideways. And of course, we see 
on the half-day chart as things have just sort of tracked along below that 200 EMA. So we'll keep our eye on Bitcoin. At some point, there will be capitulation, market capitulation. We want it to get bad. We want nobody to own Bitcoin. We want it to hit rock bottom, settle out, settle down, let everything drop, let all the hissy fits and the crying and the whining stop, and then, like anything else, start to build a base and move up. That's where we are, folks. So appreciate you being with us today. Patreon members, check out that question and answer session for you. We love to hear from all of you. Don't hesitate to write us CW at chartingwealth.com. You appreciate what we do. Become a Patreon supporter. Support our work. The things you support tend to stay around. God bless, my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.